you're passionate about something, but how passionate are you really about it, yeah. right? Are you passionate about it just when things go well? Are you passionate about it when you are just improving and you're celebrated? Or are you passionate about it regardless of the outcome, right? Mm. Are you passionate about just the process and what, what it means to be a bike racer? I have this thing called a zero national champion mindset. When you line up for a national championships, if you don't assume the competition has moved ahead, you're, you've lost. So I assume that everyone's like 5% better. Everyone's figured out all their mistakes and they've corrected all their mistakes and they're not going to repeat it on race day. And so that pressure that I put on myself is, I better be at the level I was last year. I better check off those five mistakes I felt I made last year. And I better have one or two or three things that I've upgraded this year in my approach. A beautiful thing about starting your day early is even if you misstep, there's opportunities to correct. Whereas if you start your day or your workout at five, you don't have too many opportunities to correct. So I, it was a reminder to myself that day when you have hard days or when you have long days, when you have scary days, start your day early, you know, because then you have opportunities to correct if shit goes wrong. And so that day was the high of feeling super fit, the low of the crash and like literally worrying about my bike and, you know, all the blood I'd lost and this three hour ride and, you know, this 230 TSS day that was going to be missing and that would just sit on my head. I am Venki, a working professional in IT as well as an amateur masters athlete and a coach for endurance sports. You are listening to the Working Athlete Podcast. Here, I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, I have a small request from you. Please subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also let me know what you like and what you would like to listen to more of by commenting in the comment section on YouTube. I promise to do my best to improve with each episode and bring you the best content that helps you and me get better each day. In this episode, I talked to Naveen John about his 2023 season and learnings from that season. We talk about his national camp and track selections for the Asian Championships, his Belgian season of racing, which was perhaps his most successful so far, his national games and national championship wins in ITT. Looking at his results over the years with eight national titles in IDT and one in road race, it is very easy to say that he is super strong and those wins come easy for him. Overlooking the amount of hard work that goes into each and every one of them. He shares many insights into those setbacks and how he deals with them. He also talks about how having a zero-time national champion mindset helps him. It was super insightful conversation with many practical takeaways for most of us. Hope you enjoy it as much as I did. This episode is brought to you by The Bike Affair. If you are in search of a one-stop destination that caters to all your cycling needs, our today's sponsor, The Bike Affair, is the perfect place to check out. I have known the founders of The Bike Affair, Krish and Gokul, personally for nearly 15 years now. In fact, my first century ride was with Krish back in 2008. They are both exceptional human beings and entrepreneurs that believe in providing exceptional service to their customers. And it shows. With over 14 years of experience, The Bike Affair has established itself as a trusted source offering honest advice and exceptional service. They are offering a special treat for the listeners of this podcast. You can enjoy a 10% discount on your first order by using the code BIKEYWENKY on their website. So if you are in Hyderabad, visit their door in Kondapur. Or if you are anywhere else in India, shop online by using the link thebikeaffair.com. I will leave the link in the show notes. Now, enjoy the podcast. Hi, NJ. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Working Athlete Podcast again. Thank you. So, this time last year, we spoke about um, uh, 
your journey so far at you know the year uh, 2022 um, nationals and uh, uh, stuff um so this time we are here again after your uh, uh, nationals title uh, number 8 idt and 9 uh, overall uh, so i want to uh, see i hear so much about okay he is yeah you know it, it's a given you don't uh, the results uh, are uh, there to see for everyone that over the last 10 years it's a given if he's there if he shows up it's enough and all that so i want to kind of bust some of those myths and uh, talk about the journey to get here over the last year and you have done uh, quite a few uh, uh, things differently this year so we won't kind of uh, use this opportunity to cover those uh, let's start uh, uh, at the top uh, you know after we spoke last uh, you spent quite a bit of time on the track at the national camp so how how did they go and yeah. what are the learnings there yeah so um ended last time we spoke was win number 7 at nationals on the road in shirdi and i think before that was fourth on the track at track nationals two weeks before shirdi and uh yeah that time of year you know i i mean i think we got pro- i probably got a day to talk to you and then immediately i had to pack my bags and go to goahati of okay. all places so yeah. back to where track nationals happened in in november december of uh, 2022 and it feels like ages ago to be honest it's only 12 months removed from that time but uh, yeah it was the first time i went uh, uh, after my fourth place at track nationals uh, if you perform at track nationals you get this opportunity to be part of the national team and so uh, vn singh sir uh, the head coach of the track endurance squad uh, called me on christmas i remember specifically on the 25th as like who's calling me on christmas and uh, it was vn singh uh, sir and he called me and he was like hey after your result we'd like you to come to track national camp and he knew i had aspirations i was very open about the fact that i wanted to be part of this track endurance uh, program mainly because he was leading he was the head coach and we have a connection for the last i mean we've been in cycling for the last 12 years and we both grown uh, together him as a coach uh, and as an administrator me as an athlete um, and as a coach outside the system so i said yes uh, and uh, a lot has changed in indian sport in the last 12 years you know um, indian sport cycling in particular has become very resource rich uh, equipment um, uh, you know funding um, to be able to do coaching camps you know before it was just delhi was the only option shoestring budgets uh, barely any money you know but now um, you know through through central funding a lot of stuff is a lot of opportunities have opened up and so i said okay uh you know things change and so i wanted to i wanted to jump i took i jumped on the opportunity to say yes i'm going to go to goharti so i packed up my bags my my track bike my road bike uh and went there you know and so that was a huge uh, a big step for me to to step back into the system and uh you know submit myself to uh, you know the national team uh, coaching and agendas and and things like that you know and i went in with an open mind but i also went in with the experience of previous uh, experience of having gone into camp and the big lessons i'd learned was you know you go into camp um you don't go in expecting you know rainbows and butterflies right it's it's a it's a cutthroat environment these are like 8 10 of the best guys you're all friends but as the days count down to the end of camp when the final trials are and when the selections for the national squads for the track championships or in this case the asian games are being made uh friends turn into frenemies turn into competitors right and so um i went in this time knowing that you know that's a dynamic like a like a like a interpersonal dynamic between fellow athletes uh but i also learned you know as an athlete um even if you're in a system when you have 10 guys 12 guys all following the same plan all eating the same food all sleeping the same amount of time in theory the most talented should emerge right if all other variables are kept in control um and that does tend to 
be what happens at uh, national camps. And this is not just in India, but anywhere in the world, right? Um, this is, there is no favoritism, you know, there is no, you can do your own workout and, or you can do that little extra, or you can do that smarter thing with power right. or, or right. use your metrics, right? Yeah. Uh, this is, everyone does the same thing and the most talented emerges, right? And then there is also a little bit of experience that comes into play where you learn to micromanage things a little bit. You know, you feign a cough or you feign a niggle and you skip a session so that you can be good the next day sure. at some sort of a trial, yeah. but then you pay the price further down the line. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of this very interesting dynamic. And to, to summarize what going into a national camp, elite level national camp for any country is, is you take a bunch of eggs, you throw them at the wall, the eggs are, eggs are the athletes, you throw them at the wall, the ones that don't crack are the ones that get, get to represent the country. Mm -hmm. Crack physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, and it was interesting to see 12 other athletes all with different levels of emotional maturity, physical maturity, experience, and you could see the eggs cracking, you know, and you're just like, and you're just like, okay, I, I, that egg's cracked, you know, like that egg's cracked, that egg's gonna crack like in two weeks, you know? Uh, that egg's like cracked already, but he's just holding the shell together somehow, you know? But then you see the eggs that don't crack and you're like, okay, this guy, you know, he's learned how to play this game, right? And he, uh, it's gonna be interesting. So yeah, that's what national the national camp experience was. It culminated, it was two months in Guwahati and then a month in Delhi where we worked on our uh, speed. So Goati, we used to do a lot of road training and we used it to visit a lot of uh, fundamentals of team pursuiting on the outdoor concrete track. And then we moved to Delhi where we kept a little bit of the endurance on the road going. And we focused on that final bit of speed that's required. You know, indoors on the wooden track, um, you go a lot faster for the same power. And for me, all of this was the first time ever. Uh, for all of the, every single other guy at camp, it was uh, varying levels of, you know, year, two years, three years, or four years they've spent doing this, you know? So True. I had to really go from feeling so, I mean, imagine the first time you wore a chamois and went out for a bike ride, how naked you felt, right? right? Or uh, the first time you wore cleats and you were just like, how do I clip in? How do I clip out? The anxiety. But exactly. I mean, just like there's so much unknown, there's so much uh, uncertainty about how quickly you're going to absorb this new thing. And what I'd learned in putting myself in that position was with all my experience, I mean, growth was taking place. I mean, stuff that People take seasons, months, weeks, years to master. I was mastering in like days, at most weeks, right? And I had to, I had no other option, you know? I had to learn to ride the wheel of a guy in front of me at 65 k's an hour by just looking at uh, a one centimeter square patch on his rear tire, right? right? On a fixed gear. Um, and... Uh, that was being in that sort of an uncomfortable position was really important for me at this point in my career. You know, it's like most people would say, if you tell an experienced hand at anything to start from scratch in something, most would, most if they did not take to it immediately or if they did not take to it in a way that was, that had certain amount of comfort to it, like mini successes, would just withdraw from it. You know, I'd say, this is not for me. Let me just go back to what I'm really good at doing. Yeah. You know, what I've mastered, right? Yeah. What I'm super comfortable doing. But for me, it was this test. It was an internal test for myself. Can I do things that I absolutely am scared shitless of doing? You know? Right. And, 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 and every day the answer was yes. You know? And so for me, that was a huge kind of uh, affirmation, self-affirmation that... I still have that capacity to learn. And I think that's super important, you know, if you want to grow and if you want to progress. Um, yeah, so for me, it was more of a personal experiment to see how much I can grow if I have that room to grow. And uh, fortunately, you know, my body, my mind, all of it came together and, and uh, did an okay job at it. We had the disappointment of that three to four months was it was meant to be the culmination of being selected or not to the national team for the Asian Games squad. Right. And um, 
you know, we had the final trials, which was an individual pursuit where I placed fourth, uh, four minutes, 33 seconds, uh, one, 174th, uh, thousands of a second. And that's like the eighth or ninth best IP time, you know, mm. uh, on the indoor track. And, and it was the fourth fastest on the day. Um, and on paper that would have qualified me to be part of the team. Uh, there was right. a, there was a Omni, uh, there was a group race trial selection trial which i surprisingly dominated i don't know i don't even know how i did it right. but uh everyone was expecting me to be the slowest because it was a, a test of anaerobic capacity and sprint ability mm. and i shattered the previous record by like seconds you know wow. um uh, and so people were really surprised with that uh but again that was a timed trial you know it was uh, a time trial and then they also kind of there was also a third selection procedure which was an actual uh omnium race so that's like a points race on the track and I dominated that also where I just broke away from the field and again I mean I don't I've never done a points race on the track I've never done a bunch race on the track right. but what I learned is if you're really fit on the track um, the track is less forgiving when you are trying to suck wheel and sit in the draft as compared right. to the road yeah so if you're genuinely strong and you, you're pretty resilient and you're a good bunch racer you're your talent shows more in bunch racing on the track than it does on the road oh. um, mm -hmm. uh, because the the effects of drafting on the road are significantly more than on the track mm -hmm. and so I was able to break away from the bunch and so despite my objectively uh, you know I would say top three top four performance there I didn't make the final selection because there was a criteria based on experience right mm -hmm. being able to ride the line of uh, four team pursuiters having started a bunch race at the Asian level on the track, which I've never done before. Right. And and so the opportunities went to some, uh, to a couple other riders. And you know what, I could have looked at that and said, oh, you know, I'm bitter and this and that. But to be honest, I'd already, itch, I'd, in my head, I'd already checked off so much, you know, for a lot of riders. In terms of learning. In terms of learning. I mean, it's just like mind boggling the amount I learned in those three months. Um, and um, and so for me, I was already satiated to the to the gills, you know, right. and 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 so I was like, you know what, this was good, you know, this was super super productive. This mm. was I I gave it everything, you know, and I was super happy with that. And even if I didn't make the Asian Games squad, I was like, you know what, time for me to you know uh, go back to what I love doing, uh, which uh, which is what I ended up doing. Yeah, yeah, awesome. It is the kind of learnings that you take away from that experience rather than the actual outcome which might be you know looking at you know i didn't qualify for the asian jams and stuff but uh, yeah the, you see the thing about uh, uh, the point that i the takeaway from for me is to kind of your ability to put yourself in those uncomfortable situations where you are a noob, complete noob, yeah. um, and, and learn from the situation. Yeah. Uh, excellent. So after that, you made it to Belgium. Yeah. And uh, this, this season uh, seems to be the most successful, if I'm not wrong, yeah. uh, for you in terms of racing, yeah. the number of races yeah. that you uh, competed yeah. and completed yeah. and uh, stuff. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Belgium, this was my sixth year back. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Belgium is something that I do because I'm passionate about bike racing. And, and just like, you know, not having to deal with, uh, you know, anything besides just pin your number, the whistle blows, it's full gas for 120 Ks from start to finish. Nobody knows your name. Nobody knows, you know, uh, uh, you know, where you're from. Nobody cares. You know, it's just about how the race. Thing. You have Nobody cares how many yeah. medals you have, whether you're national champion. I mean, it's just what can you do on the day, mm -hmm. right? And, and uh, can you make the racing? Can you make the break? Uh, can you make the attacks that matter? And can you be there in the end and produce a result? You know, so for me, it's like it's the most un- uh, adulterated form of bike racing and the level is just so high that pretenders are found out very quickly and uh, and so for me this year the goal was you know in the past my best result in a cremes was a, a third place and uh, and this year you know I was of course I always go in with the aspiration of kind of trying to I mean trying to win a cremes would be amazing you know mm. um, and it 
and this season had a little bit of everything the big the big one for me was i started 26 race days this time mm. in in my 3 months there um and i dnf'd in only one race um, so 25 finishes and these were finishes where i wasn't wasn't like really struggling you know i was like really in my element for the first time i wasn't nervous am i going to finish this race as long as i didn't have a flat or didn't have a mechanical like i was for the first time in a place where I, I'm like consistently I can finish these bike races, you know. Like in the past, it was like, oh, am I gonna finish? You know, I'm like oh, off it. Oh, am I gonna forty run? minutes, forty minutes. Hour. Yeah, I'm constantly looking at the clock. Right here, I was like, okay, we've this is like easy. Can I? Is this a day where I can try and go for a result, or just mm -hmm. should I just uh, roll around in the bunch and just try and finish? Mm -hmm. Right. So this season, the highlights in terms of my results was. Uh, uh, there's a there's a place called Danes in Belgium, which is very famous for its bike racing, and um, they have a cremes there, which uh, I always go to every year. And uh, I ended up in a break of 15 riders, uh, with 100 meters to the finish, I crashed. Mm. My bike was in pieces, and uh, with 5k to go, I'd actually attacked. I was out front in the front of a Belgian Kermes going for the win. Wow. And I was just like, in that, in those, it was less than 5K, it was about 2.5K. And, and in those 2.5K, I, I was in such a place where I was just like, wait, am I in the front of a Kermes in Danze going for the win? Like, why is no one chasing me, you know? And, 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 and literally within 100 meters of the line, I was caught by the the chasing bunch. Oh. I'd crashed. My bike was in pieces. And I had two options. One was to sit there and, you know, look at my bike and uh, broken pieces. And the other option was to carry my broken bike and cross the line, which is what yeah. I did. So there's a picture of me that made the evening news with this Indian guy carrying his broken bike across the finish line because it's only if you cross the finish line you get your placing. So oh. I was in that break of 15, going for the win with 2.5. I was just at the highest of highs, I was like, you know, maximum imposter syndrome while I was on the limit, yeah. get caught, crash, run to the finish, cross the finish line and was placed 15th that day. Wow. But I had a broken bike, <laughs> you know, and, and this was within the first month. Yeah. Uh, but fortunately, uh, I work with uh, uh, with Ensign uh, right. with, and they bring Luke into India and um, uh, the guy who uh, brings Look into India gave a call to the Look factory here in France, and within a day they had shipped out a new bike to me, and so I was able to have Rafi, yeah. yeah, and so yeah, Rafi, and so I was able to have the season I had, which was a podium, a third place in a Kremes, uh, seventh in a in a in a Kremes in Hull, which is a a pretty tough race with a couple of pros um, uh, from a local continental team in Belgium. Uh, seventh place there. I got to do a, a a French Federation race for the first time. Uh, an 18th there in a climbing race with the AG2R uh, under 23 development team there. Wow. So really solid field uh, in a climbing race, no less. I but yeah, in a climbing fun. race, no less. I I, I I surprised myself there with 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 uh, 10k to go to the finish at the end of this 120k race. I was looking around. I was like, wait don't we have like another 40k to go? I was feeling so fresh, you know? And so a lot of amateurism was there, you know, in the sense uh, I felt good, but I didn't have the head and I didn't believe I was doing what my legs were doing, you know? So that was a new space for me to be in. Um, and uh, so those are the highlight of my results. And uh, I started and finished a prof cremes. A prof cremes is where you have a cremes, uh, 150, 160Ks, where you have like the World Tour professionals uh, come and race. So the quick step, Alpacin guys, and there you just hang on as a as a non-professional, you know, you just hang mm -hmm. in the draft. And so that was a brilliant experience. And uh, yeah, for me, this time's Belgium, what really may, what, what really was a highlight for me besides these results was the consistency I was able to achieve. Mm -hmm. And also <laughs> when you do something long enough, right? It was kind of the the hellos and the highs this time in Belgium were a little different. Right. You know, when you come to, when you go to a, a different country, you try to inject yourself in the culture because you have a passion for it, but you're an outsider. Yeah. You do it once, people say, hey, you're the guy from India. Hi, welcome. We're probably never going to see you again. Right. You come back the second time, they look at you and they're like, wait, weren't you here last year? Yeah. <laughs> 
you come there the third time and you're like hey welcome back it's probably your last time here right yeah. and then you keep doing it again and again and again and this time what i realized it was my sixth time back and for the first time they were like when is NJ, when is navin this indian dude coming back right yeah. and so for me it was like a really nice kind of acknowledgement of the fact that you know for me it's like you know you're passionate about something but how passionate are you really about it yeah. right are you passionate about it just when things go well are you passionate about it when you are just improving and you're celebrated or are you passionate about it regardless of the outcome right mm. are you passionate about just the process and what what it means to be a bike racer right um uh and so for me year number 6 was that and that's so important to me um you know i think it's key to making bike racers who come from india in the future who perform at the european level or the asian level or whatever i still believe that you know european racing and european continental racing i mean it's not like it's a new idea it's what mm. the it's what the british have figured out it's what yeah. the aussies have yeah. figured out and to think otherwise is is kind of it doesn't make any sense you know it's what the americans have figured out the canadians have figured out um so yeah for me that is a big validation of that you know it's like when is it when is this indian guy coming back you know and and when the national champion of belgium you know tips your hat, tips his hat and says hey welcome back you know that yeah, that felt beautiful. really good yeah. you know some awesome people in the bunch and you make some you make some friends uh you know who it's just a wave or just a hello or just a hey you know just a smile versus in previous years it was like eh, who's this outsider mm-hmm. right uh he's just going to crash in front of us right? right so that was that was pretty awesome that validation from your peer group i mm-hmm. think uh is something that uh, any uh athlete who's trying to seek kind of mastery of his discipline uh likes to likes to experience so right. yeah, that's what belgium was for this for me this year awesome awesome yeah. so the, the, you mentioned right the how how deeply do you love yeah. is it uh, just when the results are there yeah. or you know just you love the whole process yeah. right so what do you think kind of helped you um this time versus say last five times yeah in in the belgium yeah right? so i'll give you a small anecdote you know mm-hmm. so it i think a large part of it is is a, a large part of it is acknowledging what goes on in between your years mm-hmm. you know so for me like an anecdote is this right so i'm there for three months and belgium is a tough place to be you know uh you know you're you're renting a house there what uh, is the resource strain that it puts on you right yeah. you're there for 3 months tickets there house you're renting a house your house in india you're also renting you're paying the electricity bill so you're like there's a lot of financial strain right and your bike breaks right uh, but you still have 2 months of a season left right financial strain mm. right um so there's a lot of stresses and strains besides just the physical you know mm. as an athlete you have to be physically ready you know you have to put in those base miles you know there's no question mm. that's like the non negotiable right mm. but then it's acknowledging that there's this 13 ounces you know in between your years and and acknowledging the stress uh, the stressors there so the anecdote i wanted to share was like when i'm in belgium you know uh, this time i uh split up my living you know i i stayed 2 months at a cheap place you know 400 euros a month it's a farm out in the middle of uh, the middle of belgium a place called nokere where there's a very famous race the tour of flanders and all of that goes past one of the climbs and i live right in front of that climb oh, wow but it's a farmhouse mm. and my neighbors are like some romanians who i can't talk to you know i can smile and say hello there's no friends there there's nobody to check on you there's nobody to say how did your bike ride go today how did your race go today whether you if you did well or if you didn't do well there's no one to share that victory or defeat with mm. uh, there's no one to talk it through you know there's no one to process the emotions with you there is no peer group there right um my roommate was a canadian kid who was 17 who when i came to the house had completely broken down you know so when i came to that house he was there before me for six for four four five months and when i came to the house i took it as a little project of mine to fix him up you know wow. so it's like you know it's almost like you acknowledge there's this broken human there who's who you know bike racing in belgium is hard 
you know, incredibly hard. Uh, you cannot imagine how hard it is, but then you experience it and you realize, ah, okay, I share a commonality with this other human. Let me try and help him out, you know? So that was part of the way I kind of navigated kind of the 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 mental part of it, right? But then the Canadian left and I was there for a month. And then I made this decision to move to another house, which was in the city, Mm -hmm. closer to humans, closer to other people, closer to my uh, race mom and dad in Belgium. I have a uh, an old couple there who helped me out at all the races and I moved closer to them just so I could go have a coffee with them, you know, bake some, bake some, make some biryani at home and share it with them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because I knew for two months, I can be mentally tough to hang on mm -hmm. regardless of what happens. My bike breaks, my bones break, you know, if I get sick, all of that. But I know after two months, I need human interaction. And that might cost, the cost of that house in the center of Belgium is twice as much. Right. But for my mental health and, and for that, f to, to kind of stay strong mentally, I needed to change my, uh, uh, change the environment I was in, mm. you know, and just that change is all that's required, right? Mm. And so that's one anecdote to how do you deal with that, uh, you know, that, that acknowledging the fact that being an athlete is not just about the physical, it's about the mental also, right. you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's one example, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Because that that is all that matters, yeah. you know, what happens in between your ears yes. at the end of the day. Yeah. Great, great. So coming to, um, coming back from Belgium, yeah. you... Uh, work towards uh, national games mm. and uh, that was a successful campaign yeah so what went through uh, in yeah. the prep for that and yeah. how did it go so the nice thing about patterns because last year also i'd come back from belgium and there was a month to national games last time while i was sitting in belgium national games was announced mm. and so i had to change ticket dates and you know it was this thing where i'm like oh my god i'm going to be empty after belgium then i have to like drag my body to do mock time trials and really push myself uh, because to perform at a top level you have to get back to the level you were at last year and then you have to give it a little bit more yeah. right there will always have to you you can't expect to come to the same start line a year later where the competition is you just assume that everything has progressed mm -hmm. you know to, to assume anything else would be you know so i have this thing called a zero national champion mindset you know when you line up for a national championships if you don't assume the competition has moved ahead you're you've lost you know, so I assume that everyone's like 5% better. Everyone's figured out all their mistakes and they've corrected all their mistakes and they're not going to repeat it on race day. And so that pressure that I put on myself is I better be at the level I was last year. I better check off those five mistakes I felt I made last year. And I better have one or two or three things that I've upgraded this year in my approach. You know, and I've done that for every single one of my eight national champions, national TT titles, I've done it for each one of my three national games titles. It's small things, you know, like which sock to wear, which whether to wear a shoe cover or not. Like this national championships was the first time I wore shoe covers. Mm -hmm. It's a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. I had shoe covers in 2012. I never wore them, yeah. you know. Um, and um, yeah, I, I wore... What made the decision? It, it, it is that, you know... Um, I need to bring that one or two, three upgrades every year, you know? Um, uh, yeah, this year, next year, I'm going to change my bottle cage, you know? I've never ridden with an aero bottle, you mm -hmm. know? But I'm going to make that change next right. year, you know? Um, and so I note all this, I don't leave it to chance, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many upgrades that I can make and I've, and I've kept a list, you know, tubeless, faster tires, um, uh, you know, optimizing position a bit, right? Uh, better skin suit, thinner base layer, you know? Um, yeah, this year I, <laughs> I I spent 20 bucks on a thinner base layer so that I can, um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a, a base layer does make a big difference in thermoregulation, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the first TT I, uh, this, na this Nationals was the first time I used ice socks in a TT, you know? So small things, you know, and-, and Ice socks. Ice socks, yeah. Mm. So just to kind of keep the body a little bit cooler, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this year's National is, Game- Is that a special socks or do you- uh, so I say it yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so basically it's a women's pantyhose. You chop it up, you put a little bit of ice in it, and then you put it uh, down your back and it just kind of keeps you a little bit 
cooler you know it runs right yeah. okay because yeah. one of the biggest things uh, uh the biggest things that on the keep, back yeah exactly yeah. one of the biggest things that keeps us from producing power is the amount of heat it also generates mm-hmm. right only a quarter of the uh fuel that our body burns goes into powering the pedals mm-hmm. the remaining 75% is lost as heat right. right so if you can mitigate the build up of heat that allows you to your engine to run more efficiently right, right. um so basic thermal ma- thermal management so it's the same pattern uh so last year's belgium to national games transition if you remember if anyone listened to uh, you know I went ha- got halfway through the last podcast they would have remember me saying that i didn't want to be on the start line of national games mm-hmm. you know it took me the first half of the tt to get in a headspace where i actually won right. the battle yeah, yeah. you know uh this year i didn't make that mistake mm-hmm. uh, right after belgium i took a small break just 5 days mm-hmm. reset the mind the body a little bit and then started my build so this time when i started national games i was ready to battle you mm-hmm. know and um the real cool thing about this national games was that uh the result was nice but uh the real nice thing about this national games was it was kind of who i shared the podium with so second and third place were uh, shrinath and and chinmay both of whom were my athletes um yeah. and these are athletes who worked with me the longest you know shrinath almost 3 years chinmay almost 3 years um so i knew both of them would do really well on that course my prediction was for uh chinmay and shrinath she had to be on the podium chin might to be just off the podium and in fact that's what almost happened vishwajit was within half a second or a minute or something a sec- uh, uh yeah a second or two within mm. the podium yeah uh, it was very close it was very close and uh but that was my prediction and that's what ended up happening and i was like okay it's it's good i know what these guys can do mm. right and i was it was brilliant to see them step up mm. and uh for me as a coach I think the true testament of your work is can your athletes still excel once long after you've stopped working with them right. you know yeah. because that means you've not just taught them you've not just handed them a fish you've taught them how to fish mm. right so for me that was a huge yeah i mean the boys also were like you know we were sitting in the uh, the the post competition uh, doping tent and we were like eh, you know <laughs> small world yeah um and uh, so super proud of that and um yeah and that was my national games this year yeah. um it's just one of those things uh, uh that it's nice to check off i think national games is potentially happening next year also so mm-hmm. it's going to be the same thing again and again but hopefully with the learnings the mistakes not repeated the uh the one percenters uh you know couple one percenters added and never being at the same place as i was the previous year that's always going to be the goal whenever i line up yeah the zero the zero uh, national champion yeah, zero time national champion myself yeah oh so awesome and the, yeah that when i um, messaged you after uh, uh, the national games oh, yeah. that was the thing that i told you yeah. about you know the people you worked with yeah. they're doing yeah, yeah, that true. Yeah, yeah 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 so that that yeah. is that is great to see because mm. the um you know what i strongly believe is that um the legacy you are um actually creating in the process of your yeah. you know, not just your career or the number of medals that you are uh, you know raking up yeah. is the number of people yeah. that you are developing yeah. as you you yeah. know along the journey yeah. mm-hmm. be it setting the paths uh, you know laying the paths for uh, you know how to go out to belgium yeah. do well yeah. keep on improving yeah. uh, just uh, not just by your example yeah. but also to kind of you know yeah. practically putting Absolutely. people more people out there yeah. who are improving and also they are they they are in turn helping others Absolutely. to improve yeah i think so. that's the because one person can't change like a like a like a culture right yeah. culture implies that many people adopt the same mindset or the way of doing things yeah and so yeah she has been part of uh, two of my belgium trips uh chinmay um uh, i kind of 
we 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 pushed very heavily to get him to to France there were so many challenges uh, i remember day one where he wanted to quit and come back home but i said hey no this is this is the way it is it's yeah. supposed to be hard you know and he he made his first uh, racing block in France with a under 23 development team there so yeah to see these boys kind of produce that national level you know medal and that's 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 awesome you know yeah. for me it was like hey you've done your job you know you're doing your job the way it's supposed to be done yeah you know? yeah incredible moment of uh, pride for me more than just winning that medal that day yeah. yeah 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 so and you you have checked off the national games yeah. and um, uh, now the next block yeah. was nationals okay. right yeah. so how did the prep yeah. towards that go and yeah. how did the yeah so national games to nationals there was exactly 55 days i know that because i do this little thing on strava where i title my rides whenever there's a big goal coming up i usually like like to count down the number of days to that mm. goal i see that um it's a nice way to remind myself that every day matters that's one thing and it's also a nice reminder to myself that i just need to take it day by day that's literally what it's the it's the it's the embodiment of that thought that idea is what that countdown is you know like uh like if you uh, there's this cool board that i saw uh, jsw sports has this um uh sporting center of excellence uh, in belari uh, where neeraj chopra trains and they have a countdown clock which count down counts down the exact number of days to the next olympics wow. right it's a reminder like every time the athletes walk into um their dining hall or the place they live it's a reminder that every day is like if you want to achieve that level of uh uh if you want to unlock your highest potential every day matters it's a sense of urgency it's a reminder of the sense of urgency but at the same time it's also a reminder a mature athlete also realizes that um the only way you get there is by taking it day by day you yeah. know you don't freak out about yeah. the lack of time or the abundance of time but you make sure that you are uh doing the most you can in every moment you know uh so i i do that little countdown and this why i know there was 55 days and so my 55 days was this nationals was challenging it was challenging the biggest challenge was this uh i had to move to a new coach mm-hmm. and what i learned in my search my hunt for a new side worked with uh, ashton for a amazing 3 years uh, one of the most amazing coaches i worked with i've learned a lot about the human psyche about um what it takes to unlock your potential you know it's just an immense amount of blind self belief uh and it was amazing that i got to work with him a world champion for so long yeah. uh but he'd moved on uh, uh taking a full time job uh as a cyclone uh for the america's cup uh, sailing team uh which is an actually a good well paying job yeah. <laughs> so he didn't have to so he doesn't have to coach anymore and things mm-hmm. like that and also his time is uh more focused on that now so so i was like okay you know that was an amazing journey but now it's time to uh, for me to take my next step and so i had to look for a new coach and it was the most challenging thing you know i reached out to people it was uh, people are busy you know mm-hmm. uh, and if you want to work with good coaches uh uh they're expensive you know yeah. and so i was like wow uh if i'm finding it so hard to find a good coach how does anyone in india have a chance you know because i'm fairly good at communication and and uh being respectful of people's time and and uh you know um i have a pretty high emotional quotient and like despite all of those to connect with a coach and 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 to get something going is challenging you know so i started working with a new coach um, uh jacob tipper so he's the coach of dan bingham and uh olympians and you know just like world class guy right and uh, he himself has won uh, stage stages at uh, uci continental level races and uh, you know i started working with him we had two months you know to nationals like 55 days and okay here's a world class coach you know he knows how to get a human in shape right um but there's always the key what i learned is the key to a successful coach athlete relationship is trust mm. right and buying into the process and believing that the guy on the other side uh values your goal or weights your goal as much as you do yeah and what i learned was 
you know, why should this world-class coach think that this new guy he's working with is going to be able to pull off what he says he's able to pull off, you know, um, because we're so disconnected. We don't know each other. And um, is he going to execute my vision, you know, for the plan and this and that. And so what I told myself, I found myself in this place where there was a lot of doubt. Mm -hmm. Is this going to work? This is so different from the way I was working with Ashton, so different from the way I was working with David Heatley, so different from the way I was working with Dan Henchy, yeah. uh, so different from the way I would self-coach, mm -hmm. you know, because national games, I self-coached myself. Nationals in Shirdi, Ashton was my coach. And now I'm just this new, throw it up, 55 days before, let's throw it all out, mm -hmm. you know, and let's start from scratch. So what I learned was this, is the magic is not the coach. The magic is not the workouts you do. Ultimately, the athlete has to put in hard work, uh, a high level of work, that work has to be the right work, it has to be done at the right time, and it helps to have the experience of being able to see data and relate it to old performances to give you that confidence that you're headed in the right direction, you know? So this time I was just like, you know what, don't think about what anyone else is doing, you know? This was the first nationals where track nationals was not really close to road. So I knew all the track boys were gonna be in their best shape. Mm. So I had all this stuff of what other people are doing, but I told myself, you know what? None of that matters, right? Focus on what I'm doing and focus on, on doing it really well. Mm. So that's the way I approached this nationals. So while there was uncertainty, I drowned out the uncertainty by focusing on what I could control. You know, and so that was my approach to nationals. And three weeks before, I had a crash. Wow. And 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 it usually, you know, I mean, I, I have very few crashes, touch wood. But this is one of those moments where that nervousness about the uncertainty of, you know, all these things mm -hmm. kind of got to me a little bit. I lost my cool. I was out on a training ride, two hours into a five hour ride. I crashed uh, middle of Hyderabad Highway. Nobody was around. Uh, I waved down a taxi, paid him 4,000 bucks to come directly to a hospital, pulled out a stone that was the size of an egg out of my elbow. You can see the scar here. Yeah. Literally pulled it out and it was gushing blood. Wow. Uh, probably lost. So is yeah. it's like nothing, no, nothing is involved? No so vehicle, it, nothing? Just a bit of gravel and a vehicle was passing. So I lost my cool a little bit, accelerated while the vehicle was passing, but accelerating on gravel is a bad Ooh. idea. Touch, touch ground really hard on this, you know, like, or open roadworks kind of gravel, you know, mm. and uh, I had one there, I had one in my, in my palm, you know, so it oh, was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, you can still see it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and this point, you know, all I was telling myself in that moment, uh, I was reading this book. Uh, I just bought this book uh, by Ryan Holiday, Obstacle is, The Obstacle is the Way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I just kept telling myself while I was sitting in that taxi going to the hospital, the obstacle is the way, the obstacle is the way. This is like, this is what you will remember on race day yeah. as what you got through and it'll allow you to push harder than anyone else. Um, and then I got myself fixed up by the hospital got a little coffee at the third wave next to my next to the hospital and a, and a chocolate chip cookie went back home like completely bandaged up blood was still dripping on my shoulder and i finished the remainder remainder of the five hour ride i did three hours on the trainer <laughs> yeah. so i mean that day was so important for me because it started off as like it started off great i was in really amazing shape and i was like i'm gonna win this nationals no one's gonna come close you know then this happens and I had two options. One was to like reduce my goals, reduce my aspirations. The second was to just focus on doing everything I can in that moment so that I can get to the next moment, right? And my goal that day was, it was around one o'clock and I was like, I still have, I started my ride at seven that day, fortunately in the morning. A beautiful thing about starting your day early is even if you misstep, there's opportunities to correct, right? Whereas if you start your day or your workout at five, you don't have too many opportunities to correct, right? So I, it was a reminder to myself that day when you have hard days or when you have long days, when you have scary days, start your day early, you know, because then you have opportunities to correct, right? If shit goes wrong. And so that day was the high of feeling super fit, the low of the crash and like literally worrying about my bike and, you know, all the blood I'd lost and this three hour ride and you know, this 230 TSS day that was gonna be missing and that would just sit on my head. And so I was like, nah, I'm not gonna let, I'm gonna get each and every one of this 230 TSS. And then finally at the end of the day when I finished the ride, the, 
a win for me was messaging my coach said i had a crash but i got this under control you know um and mm. and then so that was a big one for me uh it was a reminder that you know hey you still have it you know you still have the ability to dig and push and sacrifice and then a week later i got to spend some time with my family uh my sister had come down and haven't seen her in two years first time i got to see my nephew um and in 2018 i was really afraid of making time for family you know uh and it's a it's a it's a shitty thing to say but as an athlete you know they talk athletes the big athletes talk about the sacrifices the time away from family and friends and stuff like that and i was like i was like man you know what i'm going to i'm going to spend some time with them you know uh and and so i carved out that time and to make a already precarious situation a little bit more precarious my sister messages me the day before she's landing she's like i have a cold and your nephew uh, my 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 nephew has a cold ivan and 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 you know my brother my brother in law has a cold i'm like oh my god <laughs> what am i walking into my my you know spending time with my family is going to be the reason why i lose this national championships right and covid was also in the air right, right? and this is on like the 23rd and 24th of december right wow. uh this is literally uh, t- 10 days to nationals right. right and i'm freaking out but i'm like you know what calm down just behave optimally in every moment you know so we spent time with family and my sister was wearing a mask and she's a she's a healthcare professional yeah. so she was wearing a mask my i i couldn't hug my nephew i was wearing a mask my mom is just like what covid <laughs> moms right uh but uh i managed to make it through 3 days with them on the last day my nephew had gotten better but uh you know and so i took off my mask and i let my guard down and i got sick i got oh. sick that day so he left uh, and that night i got sick i got a little sore throat i got a little nose i'm like okay this is going to be the thing and and the last time i spent time with my family was in 2018 before a national championships mm. like so close to a yeah, national championships yeah. right and i was second that year so i was like okay i've been here before right what can i learn from that experience what can i do better you know and so i looked at what i did in training i looked at the progression of my cold i i track my sicknesses because i fall ill maybe once a year mm. and so but whenever i do i always track it like what did i do what are the workouts that i maybe bit off more than i could chew a little sooner than i should have what can i do now that gets the work done but doesn't put me in a bigger hole mm. and so i used all of my knowledge and i didn't bother my coach with this i was mm. like this is something i need to deal with mm. i got myself into the shit i need to get myself out of it and somehow there were one or two workouts where at the end of it i've never felt more drained in my life you know imagine doing a vo2 workout uh 3 by 3 at 390 watts uh 3 by 3 minutes at 390 watts with 1 minute recovery so basically accumulate 27 minutes at 390 watts while you're sick as a dog jeez it took me about six cups of coffee one chocolate chip cookie you know just i had to get sugar in the body i had to get you know uh, beta antagonists in the body i had to like find the perfect soundtrack and then i just when when i felt like you know the insulin level was right when i felt like the 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 it was peak caffeine you know kind of hit when i felt like the right soundtrack you know my body was just like okay this is the best i'm going to feel all day i started the workout i finished it somehow i hit all the power targets i messaged my i dropped a message on trading peaks i'm dead but the workout's done <laughs> and but it's a bit risky it was it? very risky right but i looked at my history mm. with training and i've learned that with colds if you can get it in and this is not for the inexperienced this is like one out of 100 athletes can pull this off mm. and i learned this from you know ashton's mentality i learned this from my tracking my history of training and i've learned that you know central governor right there's a lot of when you have a cold there's a lot of central stuff that's happening central means a brain related stuff right. that uh, down regulates our body that limits our ability to push mm. doesn't mean that we cannot push and it doesn't mean that when we push the rp is going to be extremely high mm. like heart rate is going to be through the roof your sweat's going to be all over the place yeah. but there is a way to do it if you really are 
clinical about it mm. you know and so i used all that experience and all my might to get that work out and it was so important for my confidence to nail that session yeah. and i told myself if i'm doing 390 watts sick as a dog we're going in the right path there's mm. still two weeks to go right. take it day by day yeah. and the next day i left for bijapur mm. i spent 10 days training on the course not a big believer in course specificity at nationals level courses they're all flat with a little bit of rolling terrain but i told myself i'm in north karnataka it's it's a home nationals let me go you know try and find that maybe rekindle that magic of 2017 where i won the double and and just commit to it you know i think there's something about putting your energy making sacrifices towards something that external action just subconsciously signals to your internal self that you're committed to it mm. you know mm. it's easy to be at home and just do the workouts at home but when you go through the discomfort you know you spend the money you take the time you make those calls you know you do the logistics you do the planning there's something about that level of external commitment that signals to your internal subconscious your psyche that this guy's serious about this shit you know i think he, he i think he really the zero national champion mindset bullshit's like real you yeah. know so let's 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 give him what he wants you know internally and so Yeah, I think it's a lot of playing games with yourself, you know, uh, and believing it, and being unashamedly confident while doing it, you know, uh, even if it's just to yourself, you know. Um, so yeah, that's what I did, and uh, yeah, somehow managed to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congrats on the ITT. Yeah, how, how did that road race? Uh, the road race for me ended up quite. uneventual i mean uh, ended up in a crash with about 15k to go the mm. thing about bike racing is it's it's useless talking about theory you know mm. what could have been um, uh, you have to prove it yeah. you know you can yeah. your numbers don't matter yeah. your your metrics don't matter yeah. how you felt don't, doesn't matter if you didn't do it it, yeah. it doesn't matter yeah. you know so yeah the road race was uh, a bummer my first dnf ever in a bike race <laughs> in <laughs> india yeah, yeah. uh but it is what it is it's good to get that out of the way and check yeah. it off <laughs> yeah. so yeah it's an amazing thing uh, it's every time i uh, spend some time with you i take away so many things uh, and uh, hopefully the listeners uh, do as well um, uh, it's been an absolute blast uh, this time too and thanks for taking the time pleasure to spend thanks for having me till the next one <laughs> till the next one yes that was my conversation with nj i hope you enjoyed that if you are enjoying this podcast and are finding them useful please consider supporting the podcast by subscribing to it on youtube as well as on your favorite podcasting app it really helps thanks again for your continued support see you next week with another guest